Hey guys, it's Adrian over BHA here. All right, so uh, last week I did a video on installing Talboard in Docker, which is a uh, new dashboard for uh, Home Assistant. And uh, after reading some of the comments, uh, it obviously dawned on me that why in the world am I installing Talboard in a Docker container when I can just install it and have it served right off of Home Assistant's web server? As much as I like Docker containers, this is way easier install and way easier to set up than the previous video. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. So basically we're going to start by downloading tileboard files. Once we have those downloaded in the directory that we need them to, we're going to configure tileboard. Once that's done, I'm just going to show you how to add a component into tileboard. And then lastly, I'll just show you what that looks like in action. So let's get started. So again, this video is showing you how to set up Tileboard for a uh, home assistant to use as a, a dashboard. Here is the GitHub page for Tileboard. Check it out. See what you think. Lots of information, lots of uh, screenshots and examples and everything on their GitHub page. Very cool, very cool. All right, so in the command line, we are going to be in our home assistant directory, basically where we have all of our config files. I'll do an ls here just to show you that's where I'm at. From in here, if you already have a www directory, then you can kind of skip this step. If not, then we are going to create a www directory, and then we are going to move into that www directory. And from in here, we we are going to download the tileboard files from the GitHub page. So we'll do a git clone and then the uh, GitHub link. And I'll put all this in the description so you can just copy and paste it. Basically, once that's downloaded, we'll go ahead and do an ls just to show you that it is in there. Now we are ready to move on to the next step. All right, so we're going to uh, configure Tileboard. So inside the Tileboard directory that we just downloaded, you'll see all these files. We need to copy the config.example.js file and uh, create another one for config.js. So we'll do a cp config.example.js config.js. All right, and once that's done, we're going to go ahead and edit that config.js file. All right, so we're going to scroll down here to where it says server URL. I'm basically going to change where it says localhost uh, and put in the IP of my Docker host, which has Home Assistant. Same thing for the WS URL. I'm going to remove localhost. Put in 10.10.10.5. And then now, because our Home Assistant configuration requires a password, we are going to add in a couple of lines here. Password type. And I'm going to say password underscore types dot manual, comma. Make sure you have the comma at the end. Uh, it will throw errors if you don't. And then password. And this is where we're going to type in our password. Again, end it with the uh, comma. Once we have that in there, we're going to go ahead and save it. Now, because I've added things into our www directory for Home Assistant and it didn't have one before, we are going to move over to Portainer and restart Home Assistant so that it will pick up the new www directory that we created and all that kind of stuff. So here we are in Portainer. We're going to select Has. Do a restart. And 
And of course, it'll take it a few uh, seconds to come back up. Once that's come back up, we'll go ahead and move over to see what the tile board looks like just by default. All right, so to access tile board now, specifically because we're running it inside of our uh, www folder of Home Assistant, basically we're gonna access it the same way that we access Home Assistant, but after we put the port number, we're gonna do a slash local slash tile board slash index.html so you can see what I have up here in the top this is how you will access your tile board now and so this is the default page for tile board this is kinda of what you get whenever you first use the um, config.example.js file this is this is what they have defined it's throwing an error down in the bottom corner there for updater.updater because we don't have that component so let's go ahead and move on to the next step and add in a component show you what that looks like Alright, so we are going to add a uh, sensor for uh, outside temperature. So on the GitHub page, you can see they have an example for pretty much every component they have defined. Uh, so you can easily uh, find the one that you're doing, copy and paste it, and then, uh, you know, configure it for your setup. But there's the sensor. We're going to basically just use this information here to build out a outside temperature sensor. To put in tile board. So we're going to edit our config.js file. And I'm basically going to find a spot down here where it was talking about the updater.updater. Because we're going to uh, just basically delete the one that was talking about updater.updater .updater and put in our new one. So here it is. Or delete this out of there and make some changes. So the type, of course, will be um, sensor. So you do a types.sensor. Again, make sure you have a comma at the end. Title, I'm just going to call it outside temp. All right, ID is the entity ID for that uh, sensor. So this one is sensor.dark underscore sky underscore temperature. Unit uh, for me will be Fahrenheit. Uh, state is false I'm not exactly sure what filter is doing here but I think it has something to do with uh, numbers or values coming in that are maybe not a number so I can filter those out Once you have that in there, go ahead and save it. And I know I told you last time that you would need to restart tile board for the changes to take effect. Again, I was wrong in saying that because this is just uh, HTML and, and JS files. We do not need to uh, restart every time we make changes. So we should be able to just go over to our tile board page and do a refresh and it will come up. So let's move over to that last step and see what that looks like. So here we are back in tile board and as you can see I've already refreshed it and now we have an outside temp sensor down in the bottom corner. 
everything looks awesome. That's the end of the video, guys. Uh, again, uh, way easier setup than actually installing it in a Docker container. So please, I apologize for kind of showing you the wrong way to do this. This is definitely the easiest way to make this setup work. Let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. So of course we started out by just downloading the tileboard files from their GitHub page. Once we did that, we configured tileboard. Once tileboard was configured, we added that component into tileboard. And then lastly, of course, I just showed you what that looked like in action. Like I said, that's the end of the video, guys. If you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. And as always, if there are any videos out there that you'd like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.